so what can we do for you, Ed? Hmm. Um, I had a question. Uh, I've recently upgraded both of my laptops, and uh, they have SSD drives. And I remember you and Steve Gibson talking uh, years ago about error rates on hard drives and that sort of thing. And uh, I wondered, now with uh, SSD drives, is there anything I should be doing maintenance-wise? I know you don't, from what I've heard, you don't have to defrag them anymore. In fact, it's um, exactly, you don't <coughs> want, you yeah. whatever you do, don't defrag them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, it's bad for the drives. Uh, they do something called wear leveling, which is really clever. Uh, of course, early on, people were concerned about solid state drives because they knew that you could only read and write from a, a cell, a memory cell in solid state, a, a limited number of times. Yeah. So when they designed the firmware in these things, they did something called wear leveling to make sure that all the cells get roughly the same amount of wear. And it's been my experience that SSDs are very reliable, but you know what? We have somebody to ask. Yep, we have an expert. We're going to talk to Alan Malventano later on in the show. He's going to help us build our virtual reality gaming machine. And I think we have, there he is. Hey, Alan, great to see you. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey. You're the king of SSDs, testing them from the very earliest uh, SSDs for PC perspective. Uh, is there any maintenance we should consider with an SSD, anything we should do with, like we would do with a, with a spinning drive? So, uh, like anything that stores data, there's ways that things will get corrupted or degrade over time. It's possible, right? SSDs try to minimize that as much as possible. Technically, so do hard drives, right? But a hard drive is a very mechanical thing, and an SSD, of course, is all solid state, so that you, your chances of that happening kind of go down. But there's still things that can happen, like the voltage that's stored in cells can drift over time. And there's other mechanisms in the SSD that will try to correct that stuff. So, another, so going directly back to the question, there are mechanisms very similar to hard drives. There are things like checksums and error correction and uh, you know, other more advanced algorithms, just ways to figure out that A, there is an error, and B, if there is, there's some extra data that's kind of added in there that it can use to reconstruct what it couldn't read or what was missing. Um, and uh, a lot of those algorithms, in my experience, tend to operate on the fly. They do and a very during... good job without any intervention on your part. Right, right, very yeah. much like a hard drive. Um, yeah. But what I've also noticed, just having you know dealt with a lot of SSDs over the years, and just, I, I tend to test them in a way where I'm reading the drive front to back. So if there is an error somewhere in the middle, I'm going to see it because my yeah. test will just hang, right? Um, it, there is a little bit of a benefit to every once in a while running something that will read that drive front to back. Really? Um, yeah, and then, and then mark off the uh, unusable sector. Well, it wouldn't necessarily be an unusable sector. It might just be a sector that it, the, the firmware deems is getting, like the voltages are drifting too okay. far okay. over time. Something like that. Uh, and you're just kind of coaxing it into doing what it would normally do when you tried to read the data later on. Right. Right. You're just kind of trying to make it do its job a little bit sooner. So oh, yeah. is there such a tool? <laughs> uh, I, I hate to say it, but just like anything that reads front to back, Spinrite reads front to back. Oh, okay. Anything that can okay. just, you know, something that you, now you don't want to run Spinrite with such a high, you know, a high level. No, do a level two, a level two on spin right, which is just, right, just something, running it. Something very simple. Very yeah. simple. Just read it front to back. You don't need to rewrite everything. Okay. Um, you know, just just do something that exercises the drive and make sure that everything is readable. That's that's great. Yeah. How about trim? Uh, there's nothing we need to do, right? Trim is, uh, people noted early on that uh, SSDs would initially start very fast in uh, reads and writes and then slow down a little bit, then stabilize. And it had something to do with allocation and trim fixes that most operating systems now support trim, most drives do. Is there is there a trim tool we should use or anything like that? Uh, the simplest trim tool on the planet is, uh, it sounds counterintuitive, but if you run Windows Defragger on an SSD. Ah! Hang on, I thought you weren't supposed ah! to do that. I know, I know. Well, it is Windows Defragger is aware that the drive is an SSD, uh, okay. it will not move a bunch of stuff around on there's it. There's no need to because there's zero um, access yeah. time on SSDs, so there's no benefit to defragging an SSD. There's no benefit on the SSD side from that respect, but there right. is some stuff in Windows, like if uh, directory trees go too, too many levels deep or get kind of spread in too many different places. Like There's a few little optimizations that Windows Defragger will do to an SSD, and it will move a little bit of stuff around, but it will also look at the uh, at the at what's called the volume bitmap, figure out where is all the empty space. Oh, this is great. And it, and it will initiate a trim. It will send trim 
to the drive telling it, hey, in case you didn't already know, here's all the spots that are empty that I don't care about what's there. And it will do a kind of a forced trim of everything that's empty on the drive. When was trim enabled in Windows? Is it Windows 8? Uh, no, 7, I believe. 7. So so use the built-in defragger in Windows 7 or later. Yep. And, and how often should I do that? Uh, I think it's... I think it defaults to have an automatic... Oh, God, like I don't want to do that. Why not, I'm not going to wear my drive out if I do that. No, remember, no? it's just trimming. It's just, you're just trimming. Telling it, yeah. yeah, you're just telling it, it's hey, just that stuff... It, so ideally, an SSD that was always being trimmed as things were being deleted right. or moved from other places... It should already be caught up. It should already know right. what's actually empty and what's not. Um, but this just kind of, you know, just in case something slipped by, That's it just brilliant. takes care of it. See, I'm yeah. this is why we have, and by the way, Alan's got how many? 30 SSDs at his feet right now what? in a oh, giant raid, uh, right? I don't know. There might be a few. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're not in use. All right. No. All right. When you come back, we're gonna, you're going to help me buy a very nice... SSD for our ultimate VR gaming machine, right? Yeah. All right. Any other tools and tips I should know about? This is fabulous. Spin right once in a while just to run through the whole thing. And, tr yeah. and Windows defrag, turn on the schedule, let it do it, because it's smart enough to not hurt the drive, and it will help with trim when it's necessary. Yep. Very good. Excellent. PC um, per. The other thing I would say Thanks, about Alan. SSDs is you've got to make absolutely sure that you're backed up at all times. Because with Placid drives, usually the motor died and it wouldn't read the drives, right. but you've still got the data encoded on the disk. Right. But with SSDs, if it goes <laughs> badly if wrong... If it goes, it's gone. Yeah, exactly. So back up <coughs> religiously on this one. That's really interesting. Ed, boy, I'm glad you asked that question. We got some value out of that I didn't expect. Mm -hmm. I had, who knew? I, I thought, well, Windows D Frank, is he serious? I thought that was the last <laughs> thing you'd want to do. Thank you, Ed. From, is he gone? Did we lose Ed? We could only do one call at a time, probably. We don't have the technology. I'm still here. Thank oh. you, Leo. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Sorry, I was, just, I was just being quiet. It's, there's a bit of a delay, so I don't want to like, Aren't you jump glad on you, you asked? Talk. Aren't you glad you asked that? Yeah, that was excellent. That's <laughs> wonderful there, advice, yeah. There, I just saw there's a recent, um, I think it was from Google. Somebody, I think it was from Google, Google uses yeah. a lot of SSD drives. Yeah, they issued a report about three weeks ago, you can, it's easy enough to find online, where they, they took the SSDs that they were using in their data center and they've been mapping them day, day in, week in, year in, and they've built up a database of which SSDs fail most often and why. So that's a really good resource if you're looking, if you actually get to choose your own SSD, you can go onto this database uh, and then just check out, see what the reliabilities are like in the real world. Because obviously a manufacturer is going to tell you, well, it'll last forever and a day. But it's, um, <laughs> if you're actually running these in stacks and data centers, <coughs> it's a nice, useful bit of kit. The, the of most knowledge. surprising thing from the study, uh, and I'll have to ask Alan about this, was that the high-end, very expensive SLC drives are no more reliable than the inexpensive MLC drives. Yeah, we're back to gold-plated HDMI cables all yeah. over again. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> and then they say, ignore the Uber or uncorrectable Error, bit error rate specs, but the raw bit error rate, um, I don't know what to do with it. I can't even understand what this means. But if, you, if you're if you smart enough to understand this, there you go. Thank you, Google, for it. It's great, because they probably use more drives than God. Uh, I was looking at some some uh, <coughs> footage from inside one of their data centers it's this amazing. week. Amazing. Unbelievable, yeah, you know, the whole layout of the thing.